And of course, when we're talking about the North and South Poles, we're talking about the Arctic and the Antarctic, those two polar opposite regions of the Earth. And with Antarctica, we're dealing with an entire continent that covers that region. And we know this thing is covered in ice. 98% of the continent is covered in ice. And this ice sheet over the continent gets up to three miles thick. So the ice is actually elevating the continent above the landmass underneath. So the actual continent of Antarctica is buried under miles of ice. And because of this, it's actually the highest continent in the world. If all the ice in Antarctica melted, the sea levels would rise 290 feet. And remember, because of where it sits at the southern end of the earth, you get six months of daylight and six months of darkness. So there is literally no day or night, no official time zone. And it's considered one of the most uninhabitable places on the earth because you're talking about temperatures that drop down as low as negative 129 degrees and wind speeds that get up to 200 miles per hour in certain places. So it's literally considered a desert. It's actually seen as the biggest desert in the world because there is literally no civilian population on the continent, no civilians permanently living on the continent at all. And it is the only continent in the world without a known native population. As far as they tell us, this entire continent has never had an indigenous population. You've had explorers that have passed through it, but nobody has actually ever settled here. Then we've got the Arctic region, which is all these surrounding land masses, Russia, Canada, Greenland, Norway, Alaska. And then right in the center of all this, you have the North Pole which is actually sitting right in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. And unlike Antarctica, there is no landmass at the North Pole. It is literally just an ice sheet floating on top of the Arctic Ocean. And the ice is about six to 10 feet deep. There is nothing else around. It is a giant ice sheet surrounded by water. And the nearest land is 700 miles away. And the ice sheet is constantly shifting, constantly moving because it's just literally floating on water. And the water itself is 29 degrees, just below the freezing point. And the surrounding temperature gets down as low as negative 93 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, because of where it sits at the northernmost point of the Earth, there is no time zone at the North Pole. You get six months of daylight and six months of darkness. So, of course, just like Antarctica, the North Pole is completely uninhabited. You had a lot of explorers that have attempted to reach these two regions because obviously it's a big deal being able to say you made it to the top and the bottom of the known world. And in the 1900s, you had so many people claiming that they had reached the North Pole, but none of these people had any navigation readings to prove that they had actually made it there. You know, no logs to confirm that that's where they were. And it was skeptical because you had so many other people that died just trying to get to the North Pole. So many people that had to turn their ships back around, people getting stuck and stranded in the ice. It was a difficult task to try to take on to to get to this region. But the most widely accepted claim is from 1909, Robert Perry and Matthew Henson because they actually had four Arctic natives with them when they made this trip. You know, after making it to the polar ice by boat, it went the rest of the way in dog sleds with these natives. And even though there's a lot of debate around how close they got to the actual geographic pole, it was the first most widely accepted. And again, this was all about just being able to say that they made it to the pole, that they were the first to make it to the pole, not for any type of science or observation. Not too long after this, Roald Amundsen flies over the North Pole in a Zeppelin airship. Again, strictly for the accomplishment as an explorer. But it's also an example of just how treacherous this region can get because he went back out there again in 1928. Ended up going missing at the North Pole. He ended up crashing in the Arctic Ocean and they have never found his remains. 
and then we get the first scientific expedition at the North Pole in 1948. It was called the Sever II Expedition. And this was over 24 Russian scientists specifically landing on the North Pole to make scientific observations, to analyze the polar ice sheet, and to map out the ocean directly underneath the pole. And they basically used echo sounding to map out the depth of the water. What they did report was that they had found evidence of an underwater mountain ridge. So basically a chain of mountains between the ice and the water under the North Pole. Now, what's crazy about this is that if you remember the Mercator map, the most popular map used for navigation, it's been used by sailors for centuries. But with the way that the map is laid out, it cuts off the Arctic and the Antarctic regions. But Mercator also mapped out those two regions separately. And when you look at the Mercator map of the Arctic, it's going all the way back to 1569. Right at the center of the Arctic Circle, you can clearly see four separate land masses, it's supposed to be four separate islands surrounding the North Pole. And then right at the center is a mountain. And this mountain is described as being 33 miles wide and being made of some sort of like lodestone or magnetite rock. And again, sitting right in the middle of the Arctic Ocean right in the middle of the North Pole. And the mountain is recorded under the name Rupis Nigra on the map. And this was all recorded in Latin. And in Latin, the term Rupis translates to rocks. And then of course, Nigra translates to black. So Rupis Nigra translates to black rocks, which would be referring to more than one mountain, like a mountain ridge. Now, the word rupees also translates to cliff, so like a really tall rock stretching out above the water. And you get down to the root word rupa, and it's referring to any type of object or formation. So rupus nigra would be a black object or black formation. And then you look at the word rupa as a noun, and it literally means pit or hole, which would translate to black pit or black hole, a black hit or black hole at the center of the North Pole. And remember, rupees also translates to cliff, like the edge of a hole or a pit. And the deeper you go down into a hole or pit within the earth, you're literally talking about rocks shrouded in darkness, aka black rocks. And Mercator actually described this whirlpool in the middle of the North Pole where this black rock sits and that the water from the Arctic Ocean empties into this whirlpool. Now you got to think, because we're talking about the northernmost point of the Earth's axis of rotation, this whirlpool that Mercator is talking about could actually be describing the Earth's rotation that formed this rupees nigra, this black pit or black hole, and the water that rushed into it as it was buried under the Arctic Ocean. Now, we don't really know how Mercator came across this information. He claimed to have received it secondhand from some source that, you know, we don't really know. And the map actually wasn't released until five years after he passed away by his son. So there is no way to know how he came across this information. But we know that it was confirmed in 1963 that there is an underwater mountain ridge in the upper west region of the Arctic Ocean, just across from the North Pole. And then in 1969, it was confirmed that there was a separate mountain ridge in the lower eastern region of the Arctic Ocean and stretching down into the southern regions. And then in 1979, that mountain ridge directly under the North Pole that the Sever II expedition reported was confirmed to exist directly under the North Pole and stretching all the way to the upper eastern and the lower western regions of the Arctic Ocean. In 1987, it was confirmed that there is a fourth mountain ridge sitting at the northern region of the Arctic Ocean, again, right across from the North Pole. So we've got four separate mountain ridges surrounding the North Pole. 
and one that runs directly under the North Pole. And then we've got this map showing these four land masses surrounding the North Pole with a chain of mountains at the center. So it's almost like we are looking at these same exact land masses just now buried under the Arctic Ocean. Because remember, they're saying these are mountain ridges, basically a chain of mountainous formations. And in order to have a mountain ridge or mountain range, you need to have a surface or land for it to sit on. So it sounds like we have land masses buried under the Arctic Ocean. And we know there's supposed to be ancient land masses that existed near the North Pole millions of years ago. And the thought is that somehow millions of years ago, this entire ancient Arctica region sank under the ocean. And the question is, are these mountain ridges this ancient Arctica? Because we know all of these ridges are formed from continental crust, which would suggest that they were a part of some larger land masses at some point. And these are massive. The average length of one of these ridges is 1,100 miles long and 124 miles wide. And if they are actual land masses, you know, who knows just how well preserved they actually are. Because you would imagine with them being in the Arctic that at one point in time, they were completely covered in ice. And it was possibly the melting of that ice that submerged them deep under the Arctic Ocean. And as the Arctic sea level just continued to rise, these land masses just continually got buried deeper and deeper under that ocean. Because just within the last 26 years, the sea levels in the Arctic have consistently risen around 2.2 millimeters every single year. So if you got that same process occurring over thousands of years, you know, you can see how these land masses could have been completely submerged deep within the ocean and why they would be just nearly impossible to get to because the Arctic Ocean under the North Pole is going down 13,000 feet, which is way deeper than any being can go without possibly losing oxygen and being crushed. You know, even professional divers can only get down about a thousand feet, and that's for a few hours at the most. And had divers that have gone down into the ocean below the North Pole, and the crazy thing is...